Alasiri njema mtazamaji popote pale ulipo na tumekuwa siku yako ya kuendea vema kabisa sawia na yangu hujambo na karibu kwenye tarifa za mbiu ya KTN nami Nicholas Wambua kwanza kabisa hebu tupate vidokezo Aliyekuwa mwenye kitu atumia ardhi nchini Mohamed Sazuri amekamatwa mapema hii leo kuhusiana na madai ya matumizi mabaya ya afisi yake Hatua ya serikali kuanza kuwatoza waajiri na waajiriwa ushuru wa nyumba kuanzia mwezi ujao umeibua hisi ya mseto. Wali consult nani? Na hizo nyumba nani aliwaambia tunataka kujengewa nyumba? Wange tu consult tumengewaambia tunataka nini? Na visa vinavyozidi kushuhudiwa nchini vya watu kuwawa vimesimekana kusababishwa na tatizo la akili na mfadhaiko wa mawazo. Na mkaribu mtazamaji kwa taarifa kamili za mbiu ya KTN. Na nikuwa alikuwa mwenyekiti wa tume ya ardhi nchini Bwana Mohamed Sazuri amekamatwa mapema leo pamoja na watu wengine 23 kuhusiana na kashfa ya malipo ya fidia katika mradi wa ujenzi wa barabara katika kaunti ya Mombasa pamoja na utumizi mbaya wa ofisi kwa maelezo zaidi kuhusiana na taarifa hii mtazamaji hebu kwa sasa tuungane na mwanahabari wetu Grace Kuria akiwa katika studio zetu katikati mwa jiji na tufahamishe mengi zaidi Grace pengine kwa kwanza tu taarifa hizi hebu tufahamishe ni makosa gani ambayo anamkabili bwana Mohamed Sozuri pamoja na wenzake namni kimekuwa siku ndefu kwa profesa Mohamed Sozuri ambaye ndiye alikuwa mwenyekiti wa tume ya ardhi nchini ukipenda National Lands Commission pamoja na maafisa wengine kutoka tume hiyo manake leo yote wamekuwa katika um, afisi ama wamekuwa katika korokoro za ESC ambapo wamezuiliwa tangia majira ya asubuhi manake um, tu kama uh, Mohamed Sozuri amekuwa hapo tangia masaa ya dhinashara um, saa moja asubuhi hivyo lakini ni uh, manake nilikuwa huko dakika chache zilizopita ni kwamba tumeshuhudia wengine ambao ni washukiwa wakizidi kukamatwa na makachero hao wa ESC uh, wakiamini kwamba kufikia mwisho wa siku ya leo watakuwa wamewakamata wote 24 walio katika orodha ya mkurugenzi wa mashtaka ya umma Nurdin Haji hao wote 24 wakitarajiwa kuwasilishwa uh, mahakamani hapo kesho katika mahakama ya milimani na ni kumeniuliza mashtaka dhidi yao uh, ya kiwa ni mengi wakiwa ni mashtaka saba hivi ikiwemo kushirikiana kutekeleza uhalifu wa kiuchumi matumizi mabaya ya ofisi matumizi mabaya ya fedha kujipatia mali kinyume cha sheria kunyakuwa mali ya umma kushughulika na mali inayochunguzwa na ulanguzi wa fedha haya ndio mashtaka ambayo 24 hao wanatarajiwa ku, uh, kukabiliana nayo hapo kesho watakapowasilishwa mahakamani na ni kwamba uh, kufikia wakati ambapo niliondoka pale katika uh, zile afisi za ESC ni kwamba shikiwa tuseme moja wawili hivi tayari walikuwa wamewasilishwa huko ila kama nilivyosema ni kwamba makachero hao wanafanya juu chini kuhakikisha kwamba kufikia mwisho wa siku ya leo watakuwa wamewakamata wote 24 na ni kwamba pia walikuwa naomba wale ambao hawakuwa wamekamatwa uh, wapate kujiwasilisha katika zile ofisi za ESC na pengine nikiwataja wale ambao wamekamatwa kufikia sasa ni uh, profesa Muhammad Suzuri kama ambavyo nimetaja kuna Emma Njogu ambaye ni kamishi na watume hiyo ya ardhi kuna Tom Aziz ambaye ni afisa mkuu mtendaji NLC Salome Munubi Francis uh, Karemi Mogo Catherine Wanjiro Chege Samuel Rugongo Muturi uh, Sostena Ogero Taracha na kuna Eva Mary Washera Gathondu ambaye ni mfanyabiashara na angalau Eva Mary tulipata kupata picha yake alipokuwa akikamatwa manake kama nilivyotaja Nick ni kwamba wale wa kwanza nane walipata kukamatwa majira ya asubuhi hivyo kuna ambaye alipata mfano picha ya Sozuri akikamatwa aki asubuhi ya leo ila kama Mary Eva Mary kama nilivyosema ni kwamba tulikuwa na picha yake na ilikuwa ni vigumu Nick manake ilimbidi hata mpiga picha wangu mwenda kuingia katika afisi za ESC jamaa ambalo aliruhusiwi kwetu uh, wanahabari ama mpiga picha mwenda ila uh, ilimbidi afanye hivyo ili apate hiyo picha na kwamba Nick kama ambavyo ulitaja um, uh, kesi hii inahusiana na ardhi ya Mombasa Southern Bypass ambapo tume ya ardhi NLC inadaiwa kulipa pesa uh, taslima milioni 109 kwa niaba 
ya Kenha kwa uh, mwanamke anayefahamika kama Miss Tornado Carriers pesa hizo zikiwa ni milioni moja na tisa kama nilivyotaja na ni kwamba uh, kesi hii imekuwa ikichunguzwa kwa muda sasa na makachero hao wa ESC imekuwa ikichunguzwa kwa miaka maana fedha hizo zinadaiwa kulipwa mwaka ama kesi hii inadaiwa kuanza tangia mwaka na tatu Tulikuwa tumeelezwa pia na maafisa wa ICC kwamba kuna wale ambao pengine wanaweza achiliwa ama wanaweza ruhusiwa kurejea kwao uh, uh, kama wataachiliwa na ile dhamana uh, kwa kimombo tunaita kama police bond uh, lakini sijapata kufahamu iwapo kuna wale ambao wameachiliwa kwa sasa ila kama nilivyotaja ni kwamba hawa wote moja ambao kwa sasa wako katika seli za ICC pamoja na hao wengine wote wanaosako wanatarajiwa kuwasilishwa katika mahakama ya milimani hapo kesho ni na ni kwamba sio mara ya kwanza kwa profesa Mohamed so zuri kukamatwa ama kukumbwa na kashfa yoyote maana utakumbuka kwamba mwaka uliopita mwezi Agosti alikuwa amekumbwa na ile kashfa ya reli ya SGR ila tukamuona akipata kuachiliwa na hakimu Lawrence Mugambi kwa dhamana ya shilingi uh, milioni 3.5 alipata kuachiliwa ila akamweleza ya kwamba asipate ku, uh, wajua ku, kuenda katika ofisi yake ila baadaye tukamuona hakimu um, Hedwig Ongundi akimruhusu kuingia ha, hivyo basi hayo ndio ambayo yamekuwa yakimjiri uh, haswa uh, Mohamed Sozuri ambaye ndiye tunamwangazia kwa kina sasa ila hayo ndio ambayo niko nayo kwa watazamaji wetu au huku tukisubiri hapo kesho uh, 24 hao wapate kufikishwa katika mahakama ya milimani nik Na masante sana Grace Kuria mtazamaji mwanahabari wetu ambaye amekuwa akifuatilia hiyo taarifa tangu mwendo wa asubuhi kufikia sasa akikuletea mengi zaidi kuhusiana na hatua hizo za tume ya maadili na kupambana na ufisadi ESCC ilipomkamata alikuwa mwenyekiti wa tume ya ya hapa nchini bwana Mohamed Sozuri pamoja na wengine 23 kwa makosa mtazamaji ya ufisadi na hivyo basi kama alivyotaja ni kuwa tafikishwa katika mahakama milimani hapo siku ya kesho lakini haya ndio walikuwa nayo ya kusema maafisa wa tume ya ESCC kuhusiana na swala hilo mtazamaji Persons the commission is interested in and is asking them to report at integrity center immediately The following are the said persons Joas Uindo Mogambi Lilian Savai Keverenge Jen Wanjigu Kashigi Kevin Oindo Mogambi, Eva Mary Washera, Michael George Onyango Olo, Geoffrey Rupia Muritu, Shaquille Hamed Khan, Nazir Hamed, Francis Kibaru Karanja, John Kamau Mwangi, Philip Kileya Seyanduki, Beda Wangidi Mudike. That's all. How many do you have already? Na tukiachana na hayo ni kuwa serikali itaanza kutoza asilimia moja nukta tano ya ushuru wa nyumba kwa wajiriwa na wajiri katika sekta ya uma na ile ya kibinafsi kuanzia May Mosi mtazamaji fedha hizo zitaelekezwa kufadhili ajenda serikali ya kujenga takriban nyumba nusu milioni za thamani ya kiwango cha chini muungano wa ajiri chini hapa nchini FKE ambao ulikuwa umepata ilani ya mahakama ya kusitishwa kwa utozaji wa ushuru wa nyumba hadi tarehe 20 mwezi Mei umeweza kutoa kauli yake Tisi magazetini ada hii itaanza kutozwa kila tarehe tisa ya mwezi kwa waajiri na waajiriwa kila upande asilimia moja nukta tano ya mshahara. Fedha zikielekezwa kwenye mfuko wa ujenzi wa nyumba za makazi alfu tano. Moja wapo ya nguzo nne za maendeleo za serikali al maarufu Big Four Agenda. Mfumo huu una sura tatu zikilenga watu walioajiriwa kwanza wale wanaopata mshahara chini ya shilingi 1015 wale wanaopata kati ya shilingi 1015 na 1050 na kisha wale wanaopata kati ya shilingi 1050 na 1100 awali ushuru au ada hii ilinuiwa kutozwa Januari mosi 2019 lakini muungano wa wafanyakazi kotu ukapinga hatua hii once a case is filed that is a matter of public interest and you are an interested party I don't think it's right for one party to decide they're withdrawing without consulting the other interested parties.
Swala hili lilifika kotini Koti kasimamisha kutozo kwa ada hii hadi mei 20 kesi takaposikizwa tena. Is it affordable housing for the coming generation or for the contributor of the money? Wali consult nani? Na hizo nyumba nani aliwaambia tunataka kujengewa nyumba? Wange tu consult tumengewaambia tunataka nini? Kwa sasa mambo ni kila mtu na mzigo wake. Mark na Maswa KTN News. Na mtazamaji kiongozi wa chama cha ANC bwana Musalia Mudavadi kwa sasa hivi anatoa taarifa kuhusiana na swala hilo ambapo vile vile anagusia masuala mengine yanayohusu taifa la Kenya. Tumsikize. This ill conceived housing levy. I wish to send a message of goodwill to my fellow Kenyans wherever they may be in the country and beyond as we get into the season of Easter together with the ended season of Lent. Easter reminds us of the passion of Christ. The Christian fraternity throughout the world has just gone through a season of fasting, reflection and prayer. Hopefully the passion of Christ and the self-sacrificing spirit of Easter will help to make us better people. This year's Easter comes at a time when our country is going through very difficult times. Kenyans are smarting under the weight of very many burdens. We are experiencing warring drought, attended too by famine in parts of the country. The famine is a factor of poor planning and mismanagement of the food sector in the country. As a result, Kenyans have died and continue to die of famine despite state denial. Elsewhere, the cost of living is becoming unbearable to a great majority of the Ken citizens. Insecurity and lawlessness is steadily becoming the order of the day. Even at the domestic level, Kenyans cannot feel too safe anymore. Life and limb have been lost at the hands of those we think we should trust. Even state agents, such as the police, whom we would usually turn to, have engaged in extrajudicial killing. The police, gangsters, drugs, alcohol, Reckless drivers and sundry undeservables have become agents of death in our country. Apart from these tragic scenarios, theft by servant in high places in government is also the order of the day. We are now losing count of the billions of shillings that have been reported stolen in the first quarter of this year. It seems to be accepted that stealing from the public is one of the benefits and rights of being in power. Amidst all this, the most useful intervention by government has been whistle-blowing by one corner of the government against the other corner. Our war on corruption is no more than a theater of the absurd. There is no real action against our tormentors, apart from high-sounding threats. Things could not possibly get worse than they are. It is a tribute to the resilient spirit of our people that they still wake up the next day to sedge on in this state of expansive hopelessness. If there should be any intervention, in the lives of Kenyans at this moment. It should be intervention that gives them a measure of relief. Tragically, the only intervention that we have seen so far is intervention that betrays reckless insensitivity towards the suffering of the people. The newly introduced 1.5% house tax on the Kenyan worker 
purports to be an intervention that will provide comfort in shelter. Yet it is at once insensitive, burdensome, because you are taxing an already overloaded worker. It is also unlawful. This worker is already burdened with just about the highest income tax in the world today. Add to this value added tax on a wide range of goods and services. Load on a myriad of levies on petrol and petroleum products. Then now bring in this new levy. You are killing the goose that lays the golden egg. Kenyans must be left with something from the sweat of their bros. If this government is truly committed to affordable housing, it must make it possible for Kenyans to build houses affordably on their own. The starting point is to create an environment that supports sustainable creation of jobs and wealth. To do this, this government must rein in its corrupt officials, beginning with the most highly placed ones. If the billions that are looted on a daily basis were to be recovered and injected in legitimate transactions and programs, they would generate jobs and wealth. The wealth and jobs would in turn enable Kenyans to build houses cost effectively. Another angle of the same effort would be to reduce the cost of construction, the cost of construction environment, without hurting those who contribute to that environment. For a start, the cost of land in the country needs to be rationalized. We have evolved into a greedy nation where everything about land has been distorted and blown out of proportion. Land grabbing and artificial escalation of the value of land are two of the most foremost factors in making housing unaffordable. The government must begin by rounding up land grabbers and have the stolen lands restored to the public. These people must also be put away in prison to discourage future land grabbing. Beyond this, the cost of construction materials must be addressed as well as the cost of energy. For now, the housing levy must be put on hold. For beyond being burdensome, it has the smell of a scandal in the making. The public and building economists and other experts have asked very many questions that remain unanswered. The money that is expected to be collected looks disproportionately larger than the cost of housing, even in these bad times. Who is fooling whom? What is the excess money supposed to do? Who are going to be the contractors? in the said affordable housing schemes. How have they been selected? Do they have affinity to some people in the government? How are the people contributing to this scheme going to benefit from the housing levy? There can be no taxation without benefits. As we enter this Easter season, let the spirit of Christian goodness get into the people in government so that they can for once think about the people and less about themselves. Let them demonstrate this goodness by shelving this ill-conceived levy and housing program until we are all sure that we want it and that it is beneficial to the long-suffering people of this country. Finally, let me once again wish my fellow citizens 
a peaceful and blessed Easter. Once again, let us drive carefully to avoid accident on the roads. Let us be mindful of one another. Happy Easter and God bless you all. So that is the statement. Na mtazamaji kiongozi wa chama cha ANC bwana Musale Amudavadi pale akizungumza na wanahabari kuhusiana na mpango mzima wa ada ya ujenzi wa nyumba pendekezo la serikali ya jubilee chini ya mavuli mtazamaji wa zile ahadi nne kuu za serikali ya jubilee mojawapo ikiwa ni nyumba kwa kila mkenya na kama alivyosema ni kwamba kwa sasa basi mpango huo uweze kusimama mtazamaji pendekezo lake kwamba ni mpango ambao kwa sasa hivi unaibua ama unaelekeza kashfa kwa baadhi ya watu wakaweza kuibua maswali mengi tu kuhusiana na jinsi mpango huo basi ulivyofanywa na pengine ni mipango gani ambayo imewekwa baada hizi nyumba kujengwa nani ambao watapewa mtazamaji na pesa ambazo basi zitakuwa zinazidi kiwango ambacho kinahitajika kwa ujenzi je zitaenda wapi nani ambao ni wanakandarasi katika mpango mzima wa ujenzi wa nyumba mtazamaji anasema kwamba eh, serikali kwa sasa inawanyonya tu wafanyikazi wa Kenya na kwamba basi hata wapati faida zile pesa ambazo wanafanyia kazi. Pengine anasema kwamba wa Kenya kupata mazingira mazuri ya kuweza kujijengea nyumba wenyewe itakuwa ni vema zaidi serikali iweze kuangazia hilo pamoja na kupunguza gharama ya ujenzi na bei ya ardhi hapa nchini. Kuna kwamba basi wa Kenya wanaweza kujijengea nyumba zao pasipo ama pasi na tatizo lolote. Mtazamaji vile vile kuhusiana na swala hilo muungano wa ajili nchini AFK ambao ulikuwa umepata ilani ya mahakama ya kusitishwa kwa utozaji wa ushuru wa nyumba hadi tarehe 20 mwezi Mei umeweza kutoa kauli yake na kwa sasa tuweza kuwasikiza The government is seeking to introduce that are aimed at achieving the big four agenda we support the big four agenda as a federation the idea of affordable housing universal health care food security uh, are all important and also looking at manufacturing. The challenge we have as employers is how we are going about financing these noble ideas and the changes, the many changes that are being introduced by various ministries really without adequate consultations with employers and imposing levies on business. We are in the news today about the housing levy which has been uh, published. There's a notice which appeared in the papers yesterday, surprisingly, purporting to impose the levy come the 9th of May. And we have objected to that because we have a lot of questions. The leading issue is the cost that it will have on employment, the cost it will have on business, and the fact that there are governance structures that we are not clear about, the quantum of that levy, and the principle itself of financing housing for Kenyans in a scheme that they have not discussed or accepted is a big issue for us. So as FKA we are pleading for dialogue, that as a country when we want to effect change we should dialogue, involve employers, involve the private sector, and let us agree on how to implement the big four agenda in a way that does not hurt business. This is a conversation that we intend to continue. In our view, the notice that was put yesterday that orders employers to effect the levy in May is unlawful because there is a court process that is not yet completed. But beyond the court process is the fact that there was absolute failure by the Ministry of Housing to consult employers. Na wakati huo huo chama cha walimu wa shule za upili Kupet kimetoa maoni yake kufuatia hatua ya serikali ya kuanza kwa toza waajiri na waajiri wa ushuru wa nyumba kuanzia tarehe moja mwezi Mei. Tuwasikize. To start to state categorically this is cronyship on the part of the government because this country is being led by what we are calling the rule of law. We must respect the tenets of our constitution. And that is why we made a progressive constitution to ensure that uh, nobody sneaks views in parliament uh, purporting to build houses for the workers. Uh, the government has violated the law. It has disregarded the, the courts 
because as, as we speak, unions have moved to court and they stopped the government from deducting. So in that respect, the government is violating the court orders which they are supposed to protect and enforce. Uh, there was no public participation when these things were introduced. Under Article 10, any policy that is supposed to affect anybody in this country, including the workers, is supposed to be subjected to the public's participation. The teachers earned their salaries through negotiated CBAs. And for that reason, you cannot just wake up, sneak an am amendment in Parliament, and then purport that you want to take money away. You must engage the organs that are supposed to negotiate so that uh, considerations are laid down on how these things will be done. Again, under Article 43 of the Constitution, and I want to invite you to go and read these uh, articles, the government is providing, I mean, the government is empowered through the Constitution. It is the mandate of the government to provide housing. And not only housing, but decent housing for Kenyans. So the government is trying to escape its responsibility through alienating money from the workers. We are not going to allow this. Under Article 41, the Constitution prohibits unfair labor practices. It is against international labor laws that when you give the worker some benefits, you take it again. This means the government is perfectly in breach of the constitution. constitution. And we are saying that as a union, we are demanding the following, that the government withholds the reductions of 1.5% from the teachers until the teachers are engaged. Because that is the constitutional way. You cannot take away their benefits without their approval. I want to say that failure to that, then we want to engage the government in the streets. We want to engage government in the streets, a phenomenon that we want to avoid. Because this is theft, and we shall not allow theft to take place among the Kenyan workers in this dispensation in time. Thank you very much. Na wananchi katika kaunti ya Nyeri wameelezea hisia ya mseto kutokana na ushuru wa nyumba kuanza kutozwa wa ajili kuanzia Mei Mosi mtazamaji. Mwandishi wetu Ibrahim Karanja aliweza kuzungumza na baadhi ya wananchi katika kaunti hiyo. Na swala la asilimia moja nukta tano ya mishahara ya wakenya ambayo itakuwa inakatwa kuelekezwa katika mradi wa nyumba ya beinafu ambayo ni moja wapo ya miradi ama agenda nne kuuza rais uhuru kenyata ni swala ambalo limezidi kuleta tumbo joto baina ya wakenya wengi haswa wale ambao wanafanya kazi na tayari wana mishahara ambao wanapata kutoka kwa ajiri wao kila baada ya mwezi wengi wakiendelea kupeana hisia zao hisia mseto wengine wakisema kwamba ni mradi ambao una unafaa ni mradi ambao uh, yafaa kuendelea na wengine pia wakisema kwamba japo ni mradi ambao unafaa itawaathiri wa Kenya iwapo watakuwa wanakatwa shilingi ama asilimia moja nukta tano ya mishahara yao je wa Kenya wanahisi vipi kuhusu mradi huu wanahisi kwamba kukatwa kwa fedha hii kuendelee ama wanahisi kwamba pengine serikali ya hitaji kufanya mikakati mingine ya kuhakikisha kwamba kuna makazi ya kutosha kwa wale ambao hawana makazi na swali lingine ambalo wa Kenya pia wanajiuliza ni manyumba haya yatajengwa wapi na swali la mwisho pia ni kwa wale ambao wana maeneo yao ya makazi wata, watafanya vipi baada ya wao kukatwa pesa hizi ama kutozwa asilimia moja nukta tano ya mishahara yao nipo katika afisi za huduma center mjini Nyeri nitajaribu kuzungumza na baadhi ya raia pengine waeleze maoni yao kuhusu asilimia moja nukta tano ya mishahara ambayo inapendekezwa kukatwa kutoka kwa mishahara yao yenyewe ita, itasaidia wananchi hapo baadaye pengine haina shida kama itasaidia wananchi baadaye lakini pia wanasema kwamba kila mkenya iwe una nyumba tayari utakuwa na kato ya asilimia moja nukta tano wanasema baadaye wapo kuna nyumba utarejeshwa pesa hizo ama itawekwa katika pesa za uzeni kuna ura utaratibu wameelezea pale pengine baadaye unaweza rudishiwa zile pesa ama sikatiwe kwenye 
ile scheme nyingine ya pension nyingine kama itazaidia ni sawa nafaa kukatwa ili tuweze ku, ku ile tu ili tuweze kusaidia hiyo hiyo ili tuweze kusaidia watu wote ili mirandi iweze ku Ah kwa hiyo unaunga mkono huo mradi. Ndio nauga mkono. Asanti, asanti. Pengine nikipata wa mwisho tu wa kuzungumza naye, naomba tuzungumza naye kaka tafadhali kwa haraka sana. Nieleze jina lako alafu niambie maoni yako kuhusu asilimia moja nukta tano ya mishahara ambayo itakuwa inakatwa kwa Wakenya kuelekea katika mradi wa nyumba. Pengine unaona vipi? Uh, niko sawa nayo. Niko sawa. Uh cuz we have a very huge shortage. Naweza ongea Kiingereza. We have a very huge shortage in the housing uh, segment in the country. And one way to finance the housing industry or the housing sector is to approach it through a government private public approach. So personally I'm very comfortable with it. I think all they have to do is monitor that the monies are used for the intended purposes. Because we wouldn't want a situation whereby to meto a pesama to me cut a pesa kwa mishahara, namutu amenda kanunua shamba mahali ama kitu kaya <laughs> asanti asanti nam umepata tu maoni ya wakazi hawa ambao wengi uh, hapa wanaonekana kuunga mkono uh, mradi huu wa serikali kwamba itakata asilimia moja nukta tano ya mishahara ya wakenya ambao wanafanya kazi katika uh, sekta ama katika umma pia na pia wanafanya kazi katika private sector ambao wanasema kwa kimombo kwamba mradi huu unanuiwa kuwasaidia wakenya kupata makazi kwa hiyo hawa ambao nimezungumza nao mjini nyeri katika afisi za huduma center wakiunga mkono sana mradi huu na kusema kwamba wanampongeza serikali na kwamba wanatarajia tu fedha zenyewe zitaelekea katika mradi ambayo imenuiwa. Kwa hiyo kutoka hapa kaunti ya Nyeri narejesha kwako studio. Nam bila shaka mtazamaji ni swala ambalo linazidi kuibua mjadala katika eh, nyanja tu mbalimbali hapa nchini za kisiasa na vilevile wananchi wenyewe.